Okay, uh, how many of you uh, ha have attended a conference that looks something like this? You go there, you don't know anybody, you might get a bunch of business cards, you might meet some people, you might chit chat, but you leave and you don't know anybody. And a lot of conferences are like that, a lot of events are like that. Biff's not like that at all. But the event organizers, they don't care about the connections, they just care about the nodes. They want to maximize how many people they get into the room, into the, into the hall. And what connections happen, what collisions happen between the attendees, they really don't care about that much. And I guess I should get my device here. <laughs> so uh, earlier this summer, I'm starting to think about the fact that, well, I'm going to be doing a Biff talk this year again. And what am I going to talk about? And so I really didn't know. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just kind of leave it up kind of to the universe, and the universe will let me know at the right moment, because I'm a big believer in serendipity. So I'm working on a project, and, uh, and, and I take a break from number crunching. And uh, one of my favorite breaks is to look through my Twitter stream, see what people are saying, and see what ideas are popping up. And I'm looking through my Twitter stream, and I come across this tweet by Saul. And I stop, and I look, and I go, wow, that's heavy duty. Serendipity as a service. Hmm. Now, a service is something that's deliverable. It's designable. We can improve its quality. And serendipity, most people look at as something that's random, that's luck, that's fortuitous. So how can you do random and luck as a service? Hmm, that's interesting. But I kept staring at this because deep down inside, I really believed this and I really agreed with him. And so I started thinking, well, how does serendipity work in networks? And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that serendipity is really embedded in the networks that we're in. So serendipity isn't luck. It isn't an accident. It's already out there. It's just not uncloaked yet. It's submerged in our networks. It's submerged in the relationships around us. And it just has to emerge at the right time. So one of the network mantras that I always tell my clients and tell people is this, connect on your similarities and benefit from your differences. And this is a way of connecting to parts of your network that aren't just like you, but also aren't that different. Because diversity is great, but diversity without similarity is basically useless. So you need to be able to connect on people that you have some common ground with so you can have a conversation. So in one sense, a random collision is great, but a productive collision is even better or a nearby collision is better. So I went back to the project I was working on and I said, okay, let me look at this network in a slightly different way. And so I picked out a manager from this client or organization and I colored him red. And I said, now his immediate connections are gonna be the yellow nodes. So these are the people he's directly tied to. These are people that are one step away from him in the network. Those people that are tied to the yellow people are the green nodes, and those tied to the green nodes are the blue nodes. So the red node is one step away from the yellows, two steps away from the greens, and three steps away from the blues. So I started thinking, now where is serendipity lying in this network? Where is it just waiting to pop out and say, boo, here's a great idea, aha. Look how this comes together. So the more I looked at this, the more I said, aha, I think I know. And so I knew what I was going to talk about at this year's BIF. And so I, uh, I contacted Tori, and I said, well, I, I, I have this idea, but I need some really good data to be able to prove my point. And we talked about various ways of approaching this. Last year, we gave out a survey to all the attendees, 
and, they, and most of them fill, filled out a survey, but we didn't want to go with that route. And we decided to go with some existing data that's already out there. Data that all the attendees have already left behind on the internet, tracks they've left behind, but they probably haven't realized what it was and also how interesting it is. And so uh, Tori introduced me to Joel from Social Ping, who does Twitter analytics. And he was able to download a lot of data. And he sent it over to me, and I looked through it, ran some of my algorithms on it, and came up with what I thought are some possibly interesting things. So this is somewhat experimental, so I'm going to have you help me evaluate how good these connections might be. But I think you'll find them interesting. So the first group are people that are frequently together on Twitter lists. So why did we pick Twitter lists? Because Twitter lists are something that are difficult to do. If you've ever done a list on Twitter, you realize that it's a difficult process and you have to think about it. And who do you want to put on this list versus who do you want to put on that list? And what's interesting is how people, independent of each other, create these lists and a lot of these lists are somewhat similar. So a lot of the same people keep showing up on the same lists. Here's a list on innovation, here's another list on innovation, a lot of the same people. So independent people are acting selfishly, creating lists that benefit themselves, but are creating a public good by showing us who's important for which topic. So this map right here are people that show up on a lot of lists. And again, we looked at people that are attendees here and whether they created a list or whether they're a member of a list. So if you're not on Twitter, unfortunately, you're not going to be on one of these diagrams. But if you're on Twitter, you will probably show up on one of these diagrams. And so these are the Twitter names of the various attendees. And two people are connected if they show up a lot together for similar topics. So these aren't links of people that know each other. These aren't friendship networks or work networks. But these are should-be networks or networks of potential. So the two people that are tied together would probably benefit from talking to each other. So I looked at this first group and I thought, wow, these people showed up a lot together. I mean, when the, some of the scores were in the teens and in the single digits, these people showed up together hundreds of times. So on most of the lists, they showed up together. And what, when I looked at my own data and looked at some of the other data, I realized these aren't people that should know each other, but these are people that probably already know each other. Because I know the people that I'm connected to, and I noticed a couple other relationships that I know exist. So this group is probably very similar. And this group may not have that serendipity potential that other groups have, because these people probably already talk to each other, already exchange information, and if some serendipity were to happen, it's probably al already happened. So from this group, we expect colleagues and friends, but we don't expect necessarily a lot of ahas. But could be there. The next group that I looked at was kind of at the opposite end, and these were people that were together on a handful of lists. And so these were people that were uh, rarely together, but enough, but more than just, just once in a while. They, they rose above the noise in the, in, in the data. And these people might have some interesting serendipity potential there. But these folks might also be very different. There might not be enough similarity to really have that ideal combination of connect on your similarities and benefit from your differences. So I looked at what I thought was a sweet spot in this data. And this next map, I think the connections are ones that people should really take advantage of here. So you're going to get a copy of these maps as you leave 
And tonight, when you show up at the reception, you're going to be able to use these maps and connect. So this, if you're on this next map, I would pay attention and I would really go out of my way to connect with these people. Because these are kind of in that sweet spot where you have some similarities, you have some differences, but the right idea from this group or community implemented in this other group or community might create some very interesting possibilities. So this is what I think and what my algorithms think are the, are the interesting connections. So you can either, tonight you can either prove me right or prove me wrong. And either way, I'd like to hear from you what, what happens. So tonight, the reception, be there or be square as they say, and bring your map and, and find your future friends. <laughs> and connect on your similarities, benefit from your differences. Thank you.